Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, welcome to the live stream today. And I uh, trust that you are blessed, that you had a blessed week. Uh, as we know, um, our Heavenly Father is always in the blessing business, as they say. Um, but as He says in His Word, is that He is faithful and that He does not change. Um, and He also says His thoughts to, toward us are good. Um, his thoughts toward us are to prosper us. So uh, we should be expecting to have a very blessed week. And, uh, and I trust that you're having a blessed day as well. Again, welcome to the broadcast. Uh, we are New Jerusalem Evangelistic Temple, located in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Just in case you happen to stumble onto this video on YouTube or on Facebook or something, um, just want to let you know who we are. Uh, our pastor is Pastor Linda Landon, and uh, we are doing live streams uh, while we are still meeting virtually. So um, God bless you. Thank you for joining or for watching. Amen. So we're going to open up here with prayer, and then um, we'll have a, a little music for praise and worship. Father, we thank you so much, Father, that you reign supreme, that no one can knock you off of your throne. Father, we thank you that, that your love for us prevails, that there is always grace. Father, we thank you that every morning when we wake up that your mercy is renewed. Father, we thank you that your promises are always yes and amen, and that you truly never change. Father, we thank you for our time together, and we ask your blessings on it in your son's name. Amen. Amen. So uh, we're just going to have um, a little music here, a little praise and worship. Amen.
Amen, amen, amen. Father, you truly are worthy, and we thank you so much, Father, for your presence. Father, we thank you, Father, even for allowing us to have the desire, Father, to come into your presence, Father, the desire for your word. Father, we recognize that you say that none come lest you draw us, lest you pull us towards yourself. Father, we thank you for pulling us today and causing us, Father, to thirst after you, to hunger for you, to long for you, to long for your ways. We thank you, Father. Father, we ask, Father, that as we open your word today, Father, that you would enlighten our understanding, Father, by your Holy Spirit. Father, give us, Father, the spirit of revelation and, Father, also the spirit of wisdom as we peer into your word. And, and Father, lastly, Father, we ask, Father, that we would be changed somehow. Father, that, that, that your word would, would change us today. Father, as, as you cause us to grow from glory to glory and from faith to faith. We ask all this in your son's name. Amen. Amen. So we'll get right into it. Uh, today we're going to talk about a subject called another perspective. Another perspective. Another perspective. And I'm going to share some of my screen here just so when we get to scriptures, uh, that, that you're able to read along on the screen, you know, uh, without trying to uh, fuss with opening a book or or finding a, an electronic Bible, you know, on your phone, on your device there. So let me uh, go ahead and and uh, we'll get that screen activated. And um, so we're going to talk about another perspective, another perspective. And right now, with, with everything that's going on in the world, we have many perspectives. Many perspectives. Uh, everybody's got an opinion about something, uh, especially with all the events that are going on today. Uh, so um, before we get into that, uh, let's read our text for today. And um, our text for today can be found in John chapter 3. John chapter 3. So if if you are turning in your Bibles, uh, go ahead and look up John chapter 3. And uh, we're going to just take a look at the life of a particular person that we see here in the scriptures. And we're going to see how uh, the power of having the right perspective influenced the life of someone, changed the life of someone. The right perspective. So we're talking about another perspective today. So let's read together. We'll start in verse 1. It says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou dost, except God be with him. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter in the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Amen. So let's continue on. Verse 7. Marvel not, I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know. And testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I had told you earthly things, 
and you believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? All right, so Father, bless the reading of your word. Amen. Amen. So we're talking about another perspective. And it seems that um, Nicodemus, um, he came, you know, to Jesus, Yeshua, at night to get some questions answered and to inquire about some things. And, um, and he kind of got schooled a little bit. He got questioned a little bit. So, um, you know, I believe, um, I believe he got his, his perspectives questioned, right? He needed to get his perspectives in, in check. So, um, you know, wh why is this important for us today? Why are we talking about perspectives today? Well, there are many perspectives and ideologies that people use to explain what is happening on earth. Everybody's got their opinion about what's going on right now. Um, we have conspiracy theorists who are coming up with all kind of ideas about the government doing things and controlling the weather and, and how this virus was pushed out on purpose. You know, there's all kind of conspiracy theorists talking about things. They have their perspective. And then we have doomsday prophets, you know, who are prophesying it's the end, this is the end of the days, and, um, you know, uh, Jesus is coming back, and, and uh, every, you know, this place is, is going to go up in fire. You know, you got your doomsday, your doomsday prophets, you know. Uh, but, and then you also, we, we have the voices of the false prophets, and that's really come to light lately, uh, the, these false prophets, you know, um, I think about the, the past election, and even now, it, I've never heard so many false prophecies in my life, ever, ever, and it's not so bad that there are so many of them, but just to see these people double down and triple down on these false prophecies is, is incredible. So we have that going on. Uh, we also have a lot of opportunists who look at this time and, and think, wow, here's an opportunity there's a crisis at hand, and if I form this kind of business and I sell this kind of pro uh, product, you know, then, then we'll be set when everything gets back to normal. If I buy this cryptocurrency or whatever, right, we have a lot of opportunists, and they have their perspective that, you know, right now is a time of opportunity, right? And then we have the perspectives of the political activists, you know, some who uh, they have a perspective that that's positive because their party won the election. And then you have the perspective of political activists who are negative now, right? Because their party lost the election. You got that going on. Uh, you also, we have the perspectives of those who are just hopeless. You know, they don't even attempt to understand what's going on. They're kind of like an ostrich, you know, that sticks its head in a hole or a possum playing dead because it's scared. Um, they struggle with depression, they struggle with fear and doubt, and a lot of us have those feelings. You know, a lot of, the, a lot of us, you know, wonder about what's going on, and so it gives us this sense of hopelessness, and sometimes that comes out in our speech and in our actions, right? That's a perspective, that's a perspective, it's a valid perspective that's happening right now. And then we have a, kind of the along for the ride perspective. You know, th these are people who have the feeling or the perspective of, I can't control what's going on, so I'm just going to see where this thing leads. I'm just going to go along for the ride and see where it takes me. And then finally, you know, we have those who are actually seeking for a guided experience. They're not satisfied with all these other perspectives. And I, I pray, I hope that we are in that bunch right? Those who are seeking for a guided experience, you know, those who are seeking for another perspective. Amen. So that's what we're talking about today, another perspective. Now, we tend to grasp onto the ideologies, right, or to different ideologies to help us comprehend or to help us interpret the circumstances around us, especially the circumstances that we don't have control over. So we just have this tendency just to, to grab those ideas and right we want to have an answer for what's going on and sometimes we could be careless you know in, in our choosing of, of ideologies 
you know, it seems like we're, we're going to take a hold of an ideology, whether it's on purpose or whether it's unplanned. We're going to walk away. At the end of the day, when you lay your head down, you, you have already, you know, decided on the ideology that you're going to align your life to, that you're going to align your speech to, that you're going to align your thought process to, and also that you will align your faith with. And that's why it's important to be proactive about ideologies, about the right perspective. And if we're not proactive, these ideologies will be handed to us and will accept the path of least resistance. Right? We have news outlets that are 24-7 are pushing their perspective on us. You can turn to, to a number of different channels any time of day and you will get their perspective on things. Uh, you, we have popular people, uh, musical artists, sports uh, figures, you know, popular, the, the popular group. They have their ideologies and they're always pushing them. They love to push their ideologies and their perspective. Um, we have people at our jobs that we work with. And they have conviction about their perspective, so they're going to offer you that also. And then we have family and friends who have their perspectives. And because they're family and friends and we're closer, they really want us to have their perspective. And the Bible warns us about having multiple perspectives. Uh, if we look at James chapter 1, verse 8, he says, A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. So in other words, we cannot afford to have all these perspectives and align ourselves to all these perspectives. We need to align ourselves with truth and develop a perspective that matches that truth. And, um, you know, kind of sadly is when you think about the church, the church, they take this step, a step further, right? So... You know, all the things I just mentioned, we see that out in the world. That's common amongst everyone. Everyone's hit by the news outlets, the popular people, people that we work with, families and friends. But then those of us who attend church, we, we get a little extra, right? We get a little extra. Um, and we, we try to explain the attributes of Yah and his scriptures and, and his actions. And the difficult thing is, is we don't usually study enough to know him enough, right? We, we don't study enough to know him enough. And what, what do you mean by that, Brother Larry? Is um, we tend to be indoctrinated with our perspective. And let's go a little deeper. But Larry, what are you talking about? When I talk about indoctrinated, someone who is indoctrinated has accepted what they perceive as truth from someone but they haven't found that truth for themselves. I'll say it again. Someone who has accepted truth from someone, but they haven't learned that truth for themselves. And so we become indoctrinated. We hear these ideas, and just because it's in the framework of church, and I'm not talking about any particular church. I'm not even talking about New Jerusalem Evangelistic Temple. I'm just saying within the church realm, we hear a lot of things. We hear it on social media, we might watch it on TV, we might hear it on the radio, or sometimes even at church, attending churches or visiting churches. We get a lot of perspectives, and sometimes we get indoctrinated by perspective. And because we perceive it as a holy thing, we don't touch it. We just accept it, and we go with it, instead of being like the Bereans and studying, you know, to show ourselves approved. So, it's an extra step. It's a, an extra hurdle to get over to make sure that we're not indoctrinated, right? Sometimes we, we just get surface knowledge about things, the things of the, of the Father, and uh, we become familiar only. So we don't really know him deep enough to understand him and what he's doing because we haven't gone deep enough with him. Our relationship is on the surface, and we're just familiar with him. And this won't work. It won't work in times like this when we need to have the right perspective, another perspective. He said in Isaiah, and um, let me see if I have this scripture for you. I may not have it. But uh, Isaiah chapter 55. Yeah, I do have it. Let me show it here on the screen. Isaiah 
chapter 55 and verses 8 and 9. And I'm sure you've heard of this scripture. We've talked about it before. I just want to put it in front of you so you can also see it. He says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. So what is that telling us, saints? It is telling us that he's on a whole different level. And if we want to understand what he's doing right now and how things are related to us, then we need to align with his thoughts. And we can't do that on the surface level. We can't do that, we can't do that through indoctrination. But we have to study to show our own selves approved so that we can align to his thoughts. Amen? Amen. Amen. So in our study today, we're going to look at obstacles. You know, what are the obstacles that get in the way of us achieving the right perspective? Obstacles. What obstacles are there that get in the way for us? You just want to take a look at that. And I think we can learn something from Nicodemus, our brother Nicodemus here. All right. So uh, many of you are, are maybe familiar with Nicodemus. There's not a whole lot. You know, in the Bible about Nicodemus, uh, he's only referenced in the book of John. And within the book of John, he's referenced in three different places. And uh, by the time we're done, we'll, we'll see a little snippet of, of each of those. But, uh, the, you know, what Nicholas, uh, Nicodemus ran into were, were four obstacles, right? He struggled with his perspective. You know, when he first met Yeshua, he, he, he struggled. He struggled. And, um, you know, if we take a little closer look at who this person was, this guy named Nicodemus. Well, Nicodemus was a rabbi, meaning that he was a teacher. He was a respected teacher. So others looked up for, to him, right? He, he was able to go into the temple and teach and, and, and be in a position of leadership for things pertaining to the Father. He was also a Pharisee, meaning that he was part of a devout group of rabbis. He wasn't just any old rabbi. He was a part of a very devout group of rabbis, the same group that um, the Apostle Paul came from, right? He was a, a devout and opinionated, very strong in his opinion. And um, another thing about Nicodemus is that he was a ruler on the Sanhedrin, right? The Sanhedrin uh, was a group of people who ruled over things of the law for, for the kingdom of Judea, uh, Judea there. He was a man of influence and power. And I believe um, when we see the opening verse, you can see there that he's called a ruler. A ruler. And despite all his knowledge, his position, his accomplishments, he still struggled with getting the right perspective when he had conversations with Yeshua. So, you know, just a message to us as you're listening to 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 this, you know, this thought, this topic, don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged if you happen to be struggling with getting the right perspective. Um, all of us, you know, it's a journey to, to make sure that we get the right perspective. And it's not something that you get it once and you got it forever, right? It, it's a matter of keeping plugged in with the Father and with the Holy Spirit and with his word to stay on track. Uh, once we are able to obtain the right perspective. Um, and this is going to help us with our, our daily circumstances. Amen? Amen. So let's look at these obstacles. These are obstacles that Nicodemus had to overcome. And I think these obstacles will help us overcome. These obstacles will help us in obtaining and maintaining the right perspective for life. For what's going on in our world today. All right. So you see the four here are presented. Nicodemus struggled with peer pressure. He struggled with his own opinions. He struggled with tradition-based doctrine. And he struggled with having a lack of understanding. And the scriptures point these out. And you're probably saying, well, Brother Larry, how would you get that out of that story? Well, we're going to see as we carefully read the scriptures, these are the four areas that Nicodemus struggled with. And it just so happens 
that we struggle with these same four areas. Amen. All right. So let me go ahead and let's look at obstacle number one. Obstacle number one, peer pressure. Now, the first thing that we notice uh, when we read this in John chapter 3 is that Nicodemus came to Yeshua at night to avoid ridicule. And when we see this presented in the other three areas of Scripture in John, we see that he's described this way. He's always described as the one who came to Jesus by night. So um, that probably was not the legacy that he wanted to leave for himself. That, yeah, I was that guy that, you know, I always came at night to talk to him because I didn't want nobody to see me. But that's that's how John records him. Uh, even if, as we see here in John chapter 19, verse 39, it says, And there came also Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night. Right? So, no, the thing is, is the reason why he did that was because of peer pressure. He didn't want his, his uh, counterparts to see him with Jesus. He, he didn't want to be, a, he wasn't ready to be associated with, with Yeshua and with his teachings. Not just yet. So he came at night. Now he was curious enough to want to come at night. Um, but he was cautious also, which is why he came at night. And so when we reflect on our own selves, when sometimes we like to feel like, well, peer pressure is for young people. When we get older, we don't have to deal with that. Peer pressure is for everyone because there's always pressure from our peers or from other people. And, um, you know, we prefer our own selves, no matter what age we are, we prefer to fit in with our family, with our friends or with our co-workers, you know, with our co-laborers in Christ. We do like to fit in. Nobody wants to be the sore thumb all the time. Amen. So we have to watch out for this. You know, we like to watch our favorite news sources and we like to follow our information. We like to follow it on the social media and get on Instagram or get on Facebook, you know, or just get on the, the news apps. We like to, to gather information and, you know, that information can present pressure to get us to think a certain way, to have a certain perspective, you know. And the problem is, is we adopt these perspectives too quickly, you know, it, just because there's pressure. If you add some pressure, people tend to adopt and accept something quicker than if there's no pressure. And, um, and it's because there's always this fear of what other people think. And I always want to warn us that fear of what others think will always impair our perspective. It will always do it. If we're, if we're fearful about what people are thinking, if we're always considering what other people are thinking about us, it is going to impair your perspective. Amen. So that's obstacle number one, peer pressure. Obstacle number one. Now, obstacle number two is our own opinions. So now if we look back at Nicodemus, he had his own opinion about things. So when Yeshua started talking, he, he just couldn't get with him. He was like, hold on, hold on, hold on. You know, what do you mean be born again? What are you talking about? Do I got to go back in my mama's womb? You know, what? what he, right? He had his own opinions about things to the point where he couldn't be flexible enough to, to, to try to get an understanding of what Yeshua was trying to show him this these simple concepts were difficult for a ruler you know one who was a rabbi one who was esteemed one who was a leader who was looked up to and we see that here in john chapter 3 verse 9 he says how can these things be verse 9 nicodemus answered and said unto him how can these things be so when our opinions are too strong we miss the correct perspective. I'll say it again. When our opinions are too strong, we miss the correct perspective. We get stuck and then we leave without comprehension. And I imagine the first time that Nicodemus had this conversation with Yeshua, you know, it doesn't go on very, well, actually it does go on a long time. You know, one of the fam most famous scriptures in the New Testament is in this paragraph here, if you read further down, John 3.16. He's actually talking to Nicodemus. 
That's what John 3.16 is. When he said, for God so loved the world. Right? So Yeshua, he gave him all that information. I'm sure that Nicodemus walked away scratching his head. I'm sure that the very first time he walked away without comprehension of what Yeshua was trying to communicate to him. Right? We also, we become, when we, we become closed-minded, we, we, we miss the voice of Yah. We miss the voice of the Father. If, if our opinions are too strong, we become closed-minded and we miss when the Father's talking. We miss his voice. We, we miss his, his voice in the activity, right? Sometimes you can see an activity and you can say, oh, that's God. That's Yah right there. But if our opinions are too strong, we miss him. We miss him. Closed-mindedness prevents the imagination we need to perceive the thing that the Most High is doing. I'll say it again. Closed-mindedness prevents the imagination that we need to perceive the thing that the Most High is doing. So if we're closed-minded, meaning that our opinions are too strong, then we, we will miss them. We will miss them. We will miss them every time. So the second obstacle is our own opinions. First obstacle is peer pressure. Second obstacle, our own opinions. Amen. So let's look at the third obstacle. The third obstacle is also a difficult one. It's a difficult one. And that is tradition-based doctrine. And you probably think, well, Brother Larry, why is this any more difficult than the other ones? In my opinion, the difficulty when, you, when we start looking at tradition, especially when we tie tradition to doctrine or we tie tra uh, tradition to the things of the Most High, we find comfort in our traditions. We, we like our traditions and we find comfort, comfort there because there's familiarity. And, and we like that place. We like to feel comfortable. We don't like our traditions to be challenged. We don't like our traditions to be challenged. Now, just think about a tradition-based doctrine. That means that the way you believe a thing is based on a tradition. We definitely don't like that to be touched. So this is a difficult one for us. It was also difficult for Nicodemus, as we'll see here. Nicodemus was a Pharisee. He was a Pharisee. And a Pharisee uh, is very well studied. Not only did a Pharisee need to know and understand the law, right, the, the written law and the scriptures and the prophets, they, they had to be experts in all that, but they also kept a whole nother oral law, which was later written into books, called the Mishnah. So it was like they had to learn two sets of laws and the second set was man-made, and which means that it was changing. Some some rabbi would come and change something. So not only did they have to be an expert at the law and the prophets, which we call the Old Testament, but they also had to be experts at the oral law, which was man-made and could change at any time. Right? So when you talk about tradition, even Yeshua himself in Matthew 23, he got on the Pharisees about their traditions and the traditions of their fathers, right? And those are the part of the ordinances that were nailed to the cross, those things that worked against us, right? Those laws that work against us, you know, those man-made laws that they made up, Yeshua got on their case about that. So they had to carry two sets of laws, two sets of doctrines. So let's look at John here, John chapter 7, verse 45 through 48. It says, There came to the officers, to the chief priests and Pharisees, and they said unto them, Why have ye not brought him? So I'll give you a little, little backdrop of, of this, uh, a little context for the scripture. Uh, Yeshua was out teaching, and a lot of people were gathered around, and the words that he spoke while he was teaching uh, were considered... Um, uh, heresy. They were considered to be heresy and blasphemous. And when someone does that, they usually get snatched up, you know, somebody lays hands on them, and they take them to the Pharisee and to the Sanhedrin to get judged. And they had officers who worked for the Sanhedrin, 
right? The rulers, the, the Sanhedrin, they had their own officers. And these people would get stoned sometimes, right? So the Pharisees, their expectation was because of the blasphemous words that they thought Jesus spoke, uh, they expected people just to snatch him up and bring him. So when the officers showed up without him, they're questioning, why have you not brought him? Verse 46, the officers answered, never a man spoke like this man. Right? I ain't never heard nobody talk like this guy. Well, we was all amazed, right? And so the officers didn't even, they didn't know what to say. We never heard nobody talk like this before. Verse 47, then answered them the Pharisees, are ye also deceived? And you see how the Pharisees flipped this around and put this peer pressure on them? And said, are, are you also uh, deceived? Are you deceived too? Verse 48, have any of the rulers or of the Pharisees believed on him? So now Nicodemus is a part of this group. He is there in this conversation, this very conversation. If you read the whole passage in context, he is right there with him. And you'll see um, as we go further along. Right, so Nicodemus being a Pharisee, he was connected to the same doctrine that made him think the same way these other Pharisees thought. So when the truth was spoken through Yeshua, they couldn't receive it because of their tradition. They couldn't receive it. So that was a hindrance to Nicodemus, right? They refused to put their traditions aside in order to accept the truth. Now, I know it's difficult, but how many times are we given truth, especially from the word, and we, we don't cling to it because we don't want to put our traditions to the side? We, we don't want to put our traditions on the shelf. That's what Nicodemus was dealing with. And instead of, of, of being flexible enough to receive truth, they condemned whoever conformed to the truth. So it wasn't just bad enough that they didn't accept truth, but they persecuted and they came against anyone who conformed to the truth. Nicodemus was a part of this group of Pharisees. He was right there with them. And when we refuse to see Yah's hand and what he's doing in the world today, then, you know, we tend to be that person too. I know in our tradition, we only like to think of Yah as, well, he's the God of love. He's the God of mercy. He's the God of grace. But we ignore the scripture that says he never changes. And we know that when we look back in what we call the Old Testament, that he was also a righteous judge. He was also a God of wrath. He was, and he was also very sure in his judgments. He didn't hold back his judgments. That same God is the same God of today. So when we share with you that according to scriptures, we are in a time of judgment. Best believe that we need to get off of our tradition and, and, and find out what that means. Now you don't have to take my word for it or anybody's word for it. You just have to dig into the Bible and see for yourself and pray and, and, and get understanding through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Don't let your traditions get in the way. Or else you won't see what time we're in. And if you don't see what time we're in right now. And if you don't know that the Father's hand is moving right now. In judgment on the earth and on this nation. Your prayers will not work. Your prayers will not be valid. Because you're going to be praying against his hand. Praying against what he is doing. And you're going to pray some crazy things. Some things that don't align to him. And so our prayers will not be fruitful because of our tradition. Because of our tradition. Obstacle number three, tradition-based doctrine. So what is obstacle number one? Peer pressure. Obstacle number two, our own opinions. Our own opinions. And then obstacle number three, tradition-based doctrine. And we're almost done here. There's only one more obstacle we're going to discuss. Obstacle number four. Nicodemus lacked understanding. Now we saw, we, we see him, he's, you know, he's sitting there struggling, 
You know, he he can't even get over the whole uh, analogy of, of of being born again. And and Yeshua just kept talking and kept giving him more. And perhaps he perceived that Nicodemus would eventually get it. So he wanted to give him every, everything he could, right? I don't know. But we know that he struggled because he lacked understanding. Now, let's see. You probably saying, well, brother, how do you come up with that? Well, let's see what the scripture says. Let's see. So we're going to look at John chapter 3, verse 10, out of the same account, verse 10. It says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knoweth not these things? So while, while Yeshua is presenting this information and talking to Nicodemus at night, Nicodemus, he lacks understanding. And he can't grasp it. He's like, how can these things be? And Yeshua's like, aren't you a master of Israel? Like, you're, you're a master, you know, you're up here. You're in the top echelon. You know, there is no higher spot for, a, you know, the highest spot is the high priest. He wasn't the high priest, but he was right up there under the high priest. So he said, aren't thou a master? And like I said before, to be a Pharisee and to be a rabbi, you had to master a lot of information. And so she was like, aren't you a master? Right. And so Yeshua was kind of, you know, putting them on point. He's putting them on point. He's like, listen, you should be able to perceive these things. And I, I want to say this to us. I'm talking to me clearly. The expectation is that we should know these things. The expectation is that we should know what's going on in the earth. The expectation is that we should know. We should know what's going on. We should know. Now, when we look at, at Nicodemus here, Yeshua, he exposed his lack of knowledge. He just put it out there, right in Nicodemus' face. He didn't care that Nicodemus was highly regarded, that he was a rabbi, that he was a part of the Sanhedrin, that he was a Pharisee. He didn't care about any of that. All those titles didn't, didn't mean a hill of beans to him. What, what was important was whether or not he had the right understanding. And he didn't. And he challenged him. He said, you know, how can you be a master of the whole Israel and you can't understand this little thing right here? And, and the word says the same thing to us in the spirit. How, how can we call ourselves, you know, his people? How can we say I belong to him? How can we say we're people of faith? How can we say we're people of the word? But we can't understand that his hand of judgment is on the earth right now. How can we not see all these earthquakes and all these floods and, and all these strange weather patterns and not see his hand of judgment? How can, how, how can we see a worldwide pandemic that shut down the whole world? They shut down the church and not see his hand of judgment? And not perceive that? I believe if Yeshua was walking the earth today, that he would ask us that question. And like I said, the expectation is that we should know these things. Nicodemus, his lack of knowledge made it difficult for him to receive the word. Our lack of knowledge will hinder us from seeing or identifying the truth. Our lack of knowledge will hinder us from understanding the truth. Our lack, our lack of knowledge will make us more uh, prone to accepting other perspectives. Our lack of knowledge will open the door to discouragement. Our lack of knowledge will open the door to depression. Our lack of knowledge will cause us to be bewildered. Our lack of knowledge will open the door to fear. Our lack of knowledge will lead us to the wrong actions. So it's imperative, it's important that we gain understanding, that we get understanding, that we get the right perspective. If we don't, it opens doors up to fear, to bewilderment, to depression, to discouragement. And I, I know for certain today that we are struggling in these areas. In the body, we are struggling with depression. In the body, we are, we're struggling with fear. We're struggling today 
And it's because we don't have the right perspective. We can't perceive what the Father's doing. We're not studying to know what the Father's doing, what's been proclaimed by his prophet hundreds and thousands of years ahead of now so that we would know. Shame on us for not knowing. We need to dig in and get it and get understanding so that we can have the right perspective. Amen. But rest assured, it is not too late. It is not too late. I'll say it again. It is not too late. It is not too late. Now, you may feel like, well, boy, Brother Larry, I sure I missed it. I missed it. I didn't see this one coming. I know at the end of 2019, you know, it was proclaimed that it was the end of a period and and things was going to change, and I missed it. I missed it. And then throughout 220, I didn't know what was going on. I missed it. Even now, I don't know what's going on. And that's fine. It's fine. It's not too late. It's not too late to get the right perspective. Don't worry. It is not too late. It's not. We just have to get over these four obstacles. And I'm putting myself in the same boat. We. We need to get over these four opticals, obstacles. Now, Nicholas, he came on through. Nick, uh, Nicodemus, he came on through. So let's read the rest of his account. Amen. And I, I don't have it up here on the screen, but uh, I'm going to go back to, to chapter 7. Uh, chapter 7. And I'm just going to show you how Nic Nicodemus, he eventually got the right perspective. And he came on, you know, he came along. All right, verse 49, chapter 7, verse 49, right? So when, when the Pharisees were challenging uh, other Pharisees and when they were challenging the, the officers that failed to, to grab Yeshua, Nicodemus spoke up. He spoke up. And, you know, he spoke up a little. It wasn't like he spoke up a whole lot. He, he stood up for Yeshua a little, right? And he said, uh, Nicodemus said unto them, he that came to Jesus by night, being one of them, he said, Doth our law judge any man before it hear him and know what he doeth? All right, so Nicodemus just found that little thing that he could say to kind of get them, you know, off of Jesus' track. All right, he said, hey, doesn't our law, you know, make sure that we judge a man and that, you know, that we hear him before we judge him? All right, so that's the first time we see Nicodemus kind of stepping up, right? He's stepping up. He's he's been impacted, right? He's getting over these hurdles, and uh, we still have an opportunity to do that too. We we have an opportunity to do that as well. So here's the other thing. This is where Nicodemus really shows up. Uh, we're gonna go to John's uh, John chapter 19, and uh, we're gonna read 37. Through 42, and I apologize, I didn't get this on the slide. I don't think I did. No, I didn't. I missed it. So, uh, John chapter 19, verse 38 through 42. This is where Nicodemus gets over his ob obstacles and he shows up. He gets the right perspective. All right, and um, this happens uh, after Yeshua has been crucified and they're taking them down from the cross or from the tree, the Bible says. Right. Verse 38, it says, and after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him leave. He came, therefore, and took the body of Jesus. And there came also Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes. And uh, about a hundred pound weight. As I was a lot. He bought a lot of spices. A hundred pounds of spices. Verse 40. Then took they the body of Jesus. And wound it in linen clothes. With the spices. As the manner of the Jews is to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified. There was a garden. And in the garden a new sepulcher. Where it was never a man yet laid. There laid they Jesus, therefore, because the Jews' preparation day for the sepulcher was nigh at hand. All right, so let's just look at a few things in this passage right here. Two people show up. 
where were the disciples? Where were the twelve? Where were the twelve that were the closest to him? When it was time for him to be buried, where were they at? And I'm not saying this in condemnation uh, of the twelve. But what I am pointing out is who showed up? When, when Yeshua was crucified and it was time to get him off, get him down from the tree and, 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 and go through the proper burial, who showed up? Nicodemus, Joseph of Arimathea. The two, they call them the secret disciples. The two that went to see him secretly or saw him at night. They showed up. They got over their obstacles. Those four obstacles? Yeah. They got the right perspective and they showed up. They showed up right when Yeshua, when Yeshua needed them. They showed up. Amen. Amen. When the other 12 disciples were in hiding, these two guys come out of the woodwork. It wasn't so much that they just came and grabbed his body. No, this is a big deal. Because there's, there's a big audience here. First, they had to go to Pilate to get permission. It wasn't like they can just show up there and, and, and grab him. And in doing so, uh, it was also visible right to Nicodemus' peers his peers those whom he ruled with on the Sanhedrin as well as uh, fellow rabbis yeah he showed up Nicodemus got over his hurdle he got the right perspective and he showed up he showed up amen another perspective and uh, that's where we need to get to we need another perspective. We've been offered all the other perspectives, but we need the right one. We need another perspective. We need that right one. And you'll see there the, the word is open. The word is open. That's where we get it from. We get it from the word. So, again, let's overcome these four obstacles. Peer pressure, right? Only the truth will set you free. Not everybody else's truth, but his truth. Number two, our own opinions. Let's lower the ranking of our own opinions because his thoughts are always higher than our thoughts. Number three, tradition-based doctrine. <laughs> Let's get rid of it or at least gain some flexibility so that we can still adopt his ways and his thoughts. And then number four, lack of understanding and the only way to combat lack of understanding is with personal study personal study take down these scriptures always write notes and study study dig in go get it go get that understanding amen amen so father we thank you for your word father we thank you for the opportunity to grow thereby father we thank you for the opportunity to get more understanding Father, we thank you for the opportunity to get wisdom and revelation as we look into your word. And Father, for everyone who hears this word, Father, I ask that you would give the proper understanding. Father, that you would encourage us, Father, those of us who might be dealing with depression. Father, we, we ask, Father, that, that we would, Father, be reminded of the word that is in us. Father, that you would bring your word to our remembrance to combat that depression. And Father, we come against spirits of depression, spirits of fear, Father, in the name of Yeshua, and we tear them down, Father. We don't, we don't submit ourselves to them any longer. Instead, we submit ourselves to you and the truth of your word, of your word alone, Father, from this time forward. We commit, Father, to having the right perspective. Father, we trust that your Holy Spirit is our guide, is with us, to help us to obtain that proper perspective. And we thank you. We thank you for the ministry of your Holy Spirit to do that on our behalf. Father, we thank you. We ask all these things. Father, we ask that you be with, with everyone, Father, as part of the New Jerusalem family, that you would continue, Father, to protect us. Father, that you would continue to heal uh, those who are in need of healing, those who are recovering from things. And the Father, that you would continue to keep us healthy and COVID free. And we thank you for all this, Father. And lastly, Father, in terms of the judgments that are happening, 
Father, we ask, Father, for your protection from those judgments. Father, just like you protected uh, our forefathers, Father, when, when they were in the land of Egypt in Goshen, and the plagues did not come in their, in their dwellings. Father, we ask for that same protection for your people here today. Thank you, Father. We ask all these things in your Son's name. Amen. 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 So, um, don't forget we have midweek Bible study uh, Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Uh, we always put a Zoom link out on um, on the Facebook page uh, for those who want to join. It's a good opportunity to have some good discussions. We're still in the book of Jubilees, getting toward the end, and uh, perhaps following um, Jubilees uh, before we get to Passover. Uh, we'll be able to do some studies on Passover as well, just like we did last year. All right, so that's midweek Bible study at 7. Uh, don't forget to give your offering via GiveLify. And, um, and uh, that, that'll be a blessing to the church as well as a blessing to you. And don't forget to pray. Uh, keep each other up in prayer. Call each other uh, during these times. Amen? Amen. So I... Uh, Trust that the word uh, was good, satisfying to your soul. And uh, until next time, may Yah bless you, may he keep you, and may he cause his face to shine upon you, to give you peace. Amen.